Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Skaravala from ZK Research, and I'm here at Equinix's headquarters with Didi Desgupta, VP of Product Marketing for Equinix. Uh, Didi, it's been a while since we caught up. Uh, how you been? I'm good, Zia. Yeah. Always good to see you. Yeah, no, I've been looking forward to catching up to you, because we're going to be talking AI, and of course, AI is on everyone's mind today. And uh, in fact, every show I go to, <laughs> AI is there, right? That's right. Now, what's what's interesting about AI is people have tried to compare it, you know, to the birth of the internet and cloud and all these different things, but it's really unlike any other application or workload we've ever dealt with, right? It runs in different places, you know, you, know, you gotta deal with all the different data. And so, and so talk about some of those differences and what makes AI so unique. No, 100%, and I think you hit it. It is, it is very different from any other application we've had to support in our data centers or clouds or yeah. co-locations because it is inherently multi-stage and multi-location. So you think about you know, training versus fine-tuning versus inferencing versus Gen AI versus analytics. I mean, you need all these stages, and also each of these happens at a different location. You can't have the same infrastructure for each of these stages. So very different from any other application we've used, whether it's you know enterprise applications or applications you and I use. It's, yeah. it's very different. With, those are mostly in one location. Yeah, and that's that's really, uh, I think, uh, caused companies to completely rethink their architecture. And so, so talk about why where it runs is as important as really is the model itself, right? Yeah. And, and why that, and, and how companies should think about that. Yeah, I mean, think of each of those stages that I talked about as a specific application itself. And, you know, different applications demand different infrastructure needs. So for instance, you want your training to be where compute is abundant, GPUs are abundant. That's where training does best. Um, you want fine tuning to be in a place where you've got specialized models, companies building their own models, and a lot of this data needs to stay behind the corporate firewall, so that mandates where that can run. Then you've got inferencing, which you know, is best done where the data is being generated, which mm -hmm. is all at the edge. And so you just look at these different parts of the application, they just need a different infrastructure, but then what they need is all of this to come together. Yeah, and that, in fact, what you mentioned uh, about edge and uh, um, data residency, I think is, uh, has been a big mind sh shift over the last years. I think um, a couple of years ago when companies were first experimenting with AI, there was a big movement to try to move all the data to one location. Now, that's really expensive yep. <laughs> if you're from clouds, but also impractical. Yeah. And now I think the strategy seems to be leave the data where it is and see if we can move AI to it. Is, is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, you heard terms like data gravity yeah. and now with sovereignty, it's not just the data gravity, but it's a mandate where yeah. the data needs to run. And it's just so much simpler, easier, and cheaper to move your model to the data versus the data to the model. Yeah, those egress costs won't kill you. <laughs> they will. They will. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, if I, um, I know we've had predictions in the industry about is this the year of AI? Is it the year of AI? I do believe 2026 will be the year we really start to see AI accelerate. In fact, uh, uh, I just ran a survey asking about AI adoption, and of the companies looking to do AI, uh, I think it was 38% said in the next six months, another 25% said. Uh, um, uh, six to twelve months. That's sixty-three percent in the next year. Yeah. Right. And so um, uh, that actually, I, I think, is a very positive sign for the industry. Right. And um, with with, uh, with with AI being so imminent now, how are companies talking to you about how they're adapting their infrastructure? Yeah. Look, I mean, it's a journey for every customer. It's a unique journey for every customer, uh, where they go through these stages of you know maturity going from experimenting with a few applications to being really an AI-driven, an AI-led organization. And you know, our 10,000 customers who are all, to your point, talking about AI, they want to hear you know, how other they adopt, how, what, their, you know, what our recommendation is. Each one of them is in a different phase. What's also uh, unique is each one of them has their own unique requirements combination of their applications, their sovereignty requirements, their regulation requirements. So this is going to play itself out very differently in every enterprise. And uh, that's why they're talking to us, because we can give them that freedom and flexibility to have that journey on their terms. 
not to be dictated by a vendor, by a cloud, but have their own unique journey. And uh, the fact that we have you know, more than 250 AI partners in our data centers today really gives them that choice and flexibility, which is what we're able to offer. Yeah, I think, um, in fact, when you look out ahead, I think one of the things that concerns IT leaders is uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty, right? Like the EU is trying to regulate things and so is the US. Uh, other regions of the globe are certainly being a lot more aggressive. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think one of the themes that I hear about data is just companies need more control over it. Yeah. Because the regulations that are in place today may not be in the regulations in place in six months. That's right. And so you've got to be able to adapt your data strategy pretty quickly. And so if you've got all your eggs in one cloud bucket, which yeah. you might have had, you know, pre AI, yeah, you could find yourself locked into a, uh, you know, an architecture that you can't really. That's right. Uh, avoid right. That's right. Hundred yeah. percent. Look, there is a hundred and. 72 different privacy laws yeah. from 172 different countries. Within the US alone, there's 21 states, each one of them have their own privacy laws. So this is not simple, it, it really is a depends answer. And you know, things like data residency have been in place. I mean, we've heard about GDPR and data residency. What we're seeing now is the evolution of not just data residency, but digital sovereignty and full tech stack sovereignty. Yes, that's, yeah. that's what we're seeing. And so, you know, with some of the capabilities we have, A, we've got 270 data centers in or inside a sovereign border, right? So that's one. But then um, with smart networking on our Fabric platform, it's actually one of the things we're going to be announcing, we're able to control what traffic leaves the country or does not. And so, so that's naturally bringing us into these sovereign discussions. And more general, uh, Zayas, the other thing I find very interesting about the AI uh, application, AI infrastructure discussions is, we don't have just the IT team anymore. You've got at least yeah. three teams. You've got the data and analytics team, mm -hmm. you've got the CISO and the regulations team, and then you've got the infrastructure folks. And so it is, uh, these AI infrastructure decisions are being made jointly, and I would say all three of them have equal say. Yeah, and frankly, that's long overdue. <laughs> that, is, yeah. that is, that is, that is. Now, one of the things that's become apparent in the AI era is ecosystem's important, right? right? Nobody can build um, you know, an end-to-end -end AI stack. Correct. Um, and so, um, talk about Equinix's ecosystem, you know, who maybe some of the key providers are and why that's so important. 100%. Um, look, I mean, we have always, you know, maintained a position of neutrality. I mean, it's in the name of the company, Equal Neutral Internet Exchange, that's, yeah. that's, that's Equinix. Um, but when it comes to AI discussions, I'd say there's about four or five important ecosystems that a customer thinks about. One is where is their data? More often than not, that's in the cloud, right? And so our partnerships with AWS, Google, Oracle, uh, Azure, the list goes on, so that you've got the traditional hyperscalers. But what we're seeing now is uh, you know, a lot of these neo clouds. So we've yes, got yeah. you know, Lambda and Crusoe and Corby, like these are the neo clouds. Uh, we just announced something with Nebius. Again, these these are specialized AI service providers. Most of the most of them are GPU as a service providers. So the customers want them in the mix. Then we think about the data platforms like Databricks or Snowflake. So that that's another group. Then you've got uh, the, where the traditional transport is. All of our you know network service provider partners, all the way to implementation partners like an Accenture or Deloitte. And what customers are wanting is time to market. They don't have time to sit and do these integrations themselves. The fact that all of these names I just mentioned are part of like more than 250, 300 AI ecosystem partners. And then specifically, we have very deep partnerships with NVIDIA, HP, mm -hmm. and Dell, right? Where we're not only doing the interconnection bit, the ecosystem bit, but we are building custom platforms for specialized workloads like inferencing, like fine tuning with, with NVIDIA, Dell, and HP. Um, so that's, that's just a, a quick overview of some of our ecosystems. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of the early days of private cloud, except on steroids, <laughs> yeah. right? Where companies really didn't know how to put these things together themselves. And even if they tried to, there was months, sometimes years of tweaking and tuning. Right. Um, AI is that, 
you know, exponentially, right? And so I think your ability to bring a turnkey solution to them that includes right. network, includes compute, includes, you know, the data layer, uh, data management, uh, uh, I think can really help companies fast track. Now, uh, I know you, you um, Equinix just had a number of new announcements, right, uh, uh, that can help companies move forward to the AI. So can you talk about some of the key ones and why they're important? Absolutely. So there's two, two big ones that I'll talk about. The first one is our overall AI strategy, which is distributed AI. And, you know, we talked about this um, when data is distributed, when applications are distributed, when intelligence is distributed, you need the world's number one interconnection company to interconnect it all. And so we are announcing our distributed AI strategy. Uh, it's more of an architecture. So that's one. The other thing, to, to be able to do distributed AI architecture, we really have to go back to the network that we provide, right? And it's the network that not only connects more than 270 of our own data centers, but we have more than 38% of connections to the hyperscalers, right? And so we had to go back to that network and see what we could do to tune it to carry these AI workloads now, right? And so we are announcing a module called Fabric Intelligence. Fabric has been our product for more than 10 years, mm -hmm. thousands of customers, but we're adding a module called Fabric Intelligence, which, which basically is monitoring this AI traffic uh, at, at you know 24 seven at all points in time. And it makes dynamic routing decisions based on where the traffic is and where it needs to go. So those are the two big things. We're super excited, our distributed AI and fabric intelligence. All right, well, thanks for the overview of the new products. And so uh, let's bring this home with just a couple of recommendations. So if I'm an IT pro and I'm watching this and I got my CEO saying to me, we have to have an AI strategy, we have to move forward. A couple pieces of advice on how to move forward, but do it in a way that's not gonna put the company at risk or frankly, their job at risk. Right, right. Yeah. No, so absolutely, there's multiple ways of, of engaging with us. You know, everything that I talked about, it's, you know, you can go see it at, you know, equinix.com slash distributed AI. So there's a lot of material there. Um, in addition, you know, you can talk to some of our technical experts. So we're more than happy to come in, do a 30-day assessment, and, and tell you kind of on that AI maturity curve where you are. And then definitely help with not just the infrastructure recommendations, but we've got a whole managed services team at Equinix that can actually help the customer in every stage of the deployment. Yeah, personally, I'm looking forward to the AI era. I think, uh, uh, you remember the old, uh, the internet's going to change with the way we work, learn and, learn and play. <laughs> That's right. AI is certainly going to do that, but it's going to take us to another level and uh, I think make us all just much more productive. Absolutely. So, anything else you want to add? No, I think okay. uh, that's that's good. We got it. So, on the behalf of uh, Didi Desgupta from Equinix, I'm Zias Caraval from CK Research, and thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like, and also hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast. Thanks to you.